Hello everyone, welcome back to Blockman Editor Tutorial. In these videos, we will give you a complete introduction to the Blockman Editor. In Edit Event Logic for Parts 1, we already learned how to add events to parts. In this lesson, we will use the events of the parts to complete three cases. First, let's create a new grassland project. Click on the part in the game component, select cube. Then place a cube part in the scene. Before we start editing events for this part, we need to create a jump buff. So what exactly is a buff? Usually we call the effects that can continuously bring gains to players in game as buffs, such as acceleration, continuous blood recovery, etc. Click on buff in the game component, and then click the new button below. Name it jump and confirm. Thus, we have successfully created a buff called jump. Since this buff is used to improve player's jumping ability. So we go to movement in the properties view on the right, and find the entity leaping speed parameter. We fill in a number greater than zero. We have now completed the creation of the jump buff. In subsequent videos, we will cover more about buffs. Click the part in the scene, and click edit events in the properties view to open the event editing interface of the part. What we want to achieve here is the effect that when, a player clicks on the part, the jump buff will be added to the player and the part disappears. So we create the trigger, when the part is clicked. Since we need to both add a jump buff to the player and make the part disappear, which is equivalent to performing two logical actions after clicking the part. We need to add an action node to the current event node. The execution order of action nodes is from top to bottom, so let's first complete the logic of adding the jump buff to players. Drag out the action list from the first execution port, and find, add buff to entity in entity. Select and double click the node, so that it connected to the first action node as we need to add a jump buff to the player. In the entity parameter, we have to select the entity which click the part from the current event parameters. Select the created jump buff and buff parameter. Set the buff duration to 5 seconds. Thus, we have completed logics of adding a jump buff to the player. Drag out the action list from the second execution port, and find the destroy part node in part. Since we want to destroy the click part, the part parameter should be connected to the part that was clicked in the current event parameters. Back to the editor, click run to test the effect. The player's leaping height is currently 10 units. Click on the part. We can see that the part disappears, and the player has got the jump buff. The leaping height of the player has increased to 15 units now. The second case is a trap part. We will use parts to make several traps with different effects, like making players lose HP, killing players, restoring players HP, etc. First place three white cube parts in the scene. The rule of the trap is that, when the player touches a part, the part will change color, and then perform the corresponding trap effect on the player. Red refers to damage, green stands for recovery, and purple parts have killing effects. Select a part in the scene and open the Edit Events interface from the Properties view. The trap effect is triggered by the player touching the part, so we create the trigger when an entity touches the part. Each part will perform a trap effect and change the color of itself to represent the type of the trap. This is equivalent to performing two logical actions after the part is touched by the player. So, we need to add another action node to the current event node. Drag out the action list from the first execution port, and find the target entity node in entity. Since the damage is dealt to the player who touched the part, the entity parameter should be connected to the entity which touches the part in the current event parameters. Let's fill the damage parameter with 5. Then drag out the action list from the second port, and select part. Click on set the appearance of the part, and then set the color of the part. Link part parameter to the touch part in current event parameters. Then change the color parameter to red. This completes the logic of a damage trap. 
Back to the editor, select another part and open the edit events interface from the properties view. This time we will achieve the effect of restoring the player's HP. Similarly, we create the trigger, when an entity touches the part, and then add an action node to the event node. The first execution port is connected to the restore entity HP node in entity. The entity parameter should be connected to the entity which touches the part in the current event parameters. Set recovery parameter to 5. The second execution port performs the color change. So we repeat the previous steps, except this time the color should be green. Back in the editor, let's get the last one done. The last part is aimed to achieve the effect of killing the player. Open the edit events interface, select the when an entity touches the part, and add an action node to the event node. Connect the kill entity node in entity to the first port. The entity parameter should be connected to the entity which touches the part in the current event parameters. The second execution interface sets the color of the part, choose purple for the color. After going through all the steps, return to the editor, click run and test the effects. The third case is teleportation. When a player is standing on the part, the player will be teleported to a specified location in 3 seconds. Place two parts in the scene and adjust their position, size and color. Open the edit events interface of the yellow part, create the trigger when an entity touches the part. To create a 3 second duration of teleportation, after the player touches the part, we need to find start the counter node under flow control in logic. Fill in 3 in the interval parameter. Set the times parameter to 1. Now the logic of this node is to execute the subsequent logic of the action node connection every 3 seconds. The number of executions is the number in the number of times parameter. Because we fill in 1, this will only be executed once. That is, executing the logic connected to this action node after 3 seconds. So how do we teleport players? The teleportation effect is in fact to modify the coordinates of the player in the game scene. We use set and tidies coordinates under entity to achieve this effect. The entity parameter is connected to the entity which touches the part in the current event parameters. Select the current map in map parameter, which is map 001. Coordinates parameters can be selected by clicking the coordinate button to enter the scene. We select somewhere on the surface of the green part and left click. After all necessary parameters are set, return to the editor. Click run and test the effect. That's all for this video. We hope it can help you on your way to a great creator. If you want to know more about the editor, you can comment below the video or post on the official forum. See you in the next video.